Hello everyone, welcome back to the DC Sports Resort. I'm Johnny District, and I just wanted to go, uh, today, I wanted to do a video on the Wizards. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not really that big of a fan of the NBA. I find basketball boring now, but growing up, I, I loved the, the NBA. I think it's, uh, the game has changed, unfortunately, for many reasons. It's just almost unwatchable now, uh, but since... This is a DC uh, sports channel. I will not leave them out. Uh, they can be a part of it. So I'll comment. I'll try to do what I can. Uh, I tried watching two games because of this blog. And I just... I almost fell asleep. Uh, I'll be honest. But I did get to see some of uh, what the Wizards did. They've been quite active on the trade deadline. And Bradley Beal is now out for the season. So... Uh, things look sort of bleak for the Wizards, and growing up, the Wizards have, to me, always been a laughing stock. Uh, I still remember one time I was like, it's not all bad, at least the Wizards won today, and this is after, like, the Redskins got blown out, and some of my friends and family would be like, yeah, who cares? Uh, and that's sort of been, uh, uh, the Wizards lately. Uh, they were solid in the 80s in the records, but just the 90s. Uh, it was just bad. In fact, I, I remember Wes Unsell as a coach, and they just didn't do that well. And when they hired his son, I was like, ugh. But, you know, hopefully his son does well. I have nothing against the son. I, I'm not saying if it's a bad or a good hire. I just remember uh, his father's reign as the GM and coach, and I was like, really? We're going to hire him again? Hire his son? So, But, you know, he could end up being solid. Uh, but I still remember following them, uh, Jim Lynham, Eddie, uh, Eddie Jordan, Bernie Bickerstaff, uh, I still, uh, remember those coaches as a, as a child, uh, and it looked like they were almost going to get respectability, but then Gilbert Arenas, uh, that faltered, the Antoine Jameson, Karan Butler, uh, a lot of that uh, John Wall looked like, and then he got hurt. Uh, so sometimes I feel like the, the Wizards are just cursed. Uh, but I'll comment what's on the news. Uh, speaking of curse, Bradley Beal is now out for the season. And it's sort of unfortunate because in the NBA, I think they're ninth or 10th. So they're still in playoff contention. And I think that's what the Wizards internally, at least if I was in the front office, I would be like, we have to start building a team that gets to the playoffs every year, year in and year out. Uh, we shouldn't be, you know, trying to build a contender overnight. But right now, they're sort of uh, bottom of the barrel. Not everyone gets a LeBron James and what, what he did with Cleveland. And that's what I think their goal should be, is just trying to get a team that's good enough to go to the playoffs uh, every year. Uh, even though there's different sports, like the Chiefs. The Chiefs... They only won one Super Bowl, but they didn't become a franchise contender uh, overnight. They were a team that just made the playoffs year in and year out. And once you get used to at least having winning seasons, then talk and expectation raises your franchise to another level. So uh, that that's what I think uh, really needs to happen uh, personally uh, with the Wizards. Uh, something like those different... Uh, Thing. So the first one was, uh, sorry, I'm looking at notes, Chris Stapps. Uh, he's seven foot three and he's from Dallas. He averages uh, almost 20 points a game. I think it's 19 point something. Uh, 19 point, no, I just put 19 boards and around almost 19 points a game and almost eight boards a game. Uh, he's supposed to be very skilled. Uh, they said the only third is he gets injury prone. And I, I like that trade. Uh, what they gave up uh, was Spencer Dwindle and Bertan, which Bertan had an expensive contract. So I'm glad they got that off the books because if Beal leaves, they're going to have to start rebuilding. Uh, and Spencer Dwindle, solid player, but if you can get a guy seven foot three and can get almost 20 points a game with eight boards and uh, he's a shot blocking presence. Uh, I think that's a, a good trade. And when, coming over to Wizards with Beal out, uh, he has a chance to really develop and hone himself and be the number one uh, person. He used to not get along with Luka Donovich. Uh, 
over in Dallas. So I, I think this would be a good one to really, he can really step up his game and find out uh, how, you know, is he a number one? Uh, was Luca holding him back? Was he not uh, with Beal? So I, I think that's a solid trade and I think we'll find out a lot about him. Uh, if he doesn't work out and Beal leaves, then he can, uh, who knows, maybe the Wizards will trade him somewhere else. Uh, who knows uh, what's that? And they also traded, uh, I forget the guy's, uh, the other guy's name, Montrell. Uh, but they traded him to Charlotte. And he averaged 14 points a game. He's 6'7", but he has like a 7'3 wingspan. Uh, and I think they just got him. The, the Vernon Carey guy, I think, is the main thing what they got even though he only averages two or three points a game he's 20 years old uh he could develop and if Bradley Beal ends up leaving and they rebuild he'll get a lot of minutes and he can really improve his game uh so that I I I would say from a talent standpoint I really don't like that trade uh I think maybe I think they made that trade though to make room for uh Kristop and put him at center uh, so I, I can see why they did that. So I like what they did on the deadline. I think Kristaps uh, will be an upgrade. I think he's a solid player. And me, and Beal's the only guy that averages o over uh, 20 points a game. So I think getting another 20-point score is going to help. I think in today's NBA, you need three 20-point scores to be a contender. And if this guy works out and he turns out to be uh, that 20-point scorer, uh, we have two, and maybe Beal will uh, re-sign, or maybe he might, uh, if this guy plays really well, Beal might just take that one-year option and play on that team and end up doing really well. So I, I like I like what the Wizards are doing, uh, per se, and so that that's my thought on the Wizards. And the funny thing is, before I looked at this news, I was actually going to do another video on the Capitals and the trade deadline. Uh, but I decided to go with the Wizards because uh, this is a DC sports and I'll give them some attention too. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to pretty much say today. Uh, remember, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next video.